Welcome to this tutorial on the Pact Language Basics. In this tutorial, I'll go over some of the ideas you can use to get started with the basic building blocks of the Pact Language. I'll review some of the Pact Language reference, syntax, built-in functions, and end by building a few custom functions. To get started, navigate to the Pact Smart Contract Language Reference. This reference describes the syntax and semantics of the Pact Language. If you haven't already, it's helpful to read through some of this documentation for yourself to better understand the PACT language. Start by navigating to the language syntax. PACT syntax can be found using the panel on the left or by scrolling down to syntax on the home page. Try running some of these commands like strings, decimals, integers, and others in the PACT online editor. We'll take some time now to run a few similar commands to get you started. Running basic operations in PACT is simple. To run each command, go to the PACT online editor at pact.cadena.io and select REPL. Let's run a few commands now. First, an integer is any whole number value that does not include a decimal. So for example, if I type 19, what I'll get back is 19. Next, decimals are any values that include a decimal. In this case, if I type 25.3, what I get back is 25.3. Strings are a sequence of characters such as words. For example, hello. When I try to run this string, I get an error. The issue is that Pact doesn't know what hello means. To make it a string, remember to put quotes around it. There's also an alternative way to represent strings using Pact. Preceding strings with a single tick is commonly used to mark unique items such as function or table names. It doesn't support whitespace or multi-line strings, but can be a helpful way to identify strings more succinctly. These are referred to as symbols. At any point while you're working in the terminal, you can type reset to clear the console and continue entering commands. I'll do that now. Now let's take a look at booleans. Booleans include true and false values. So, if I type in true, I'll get true, and if I type false, I'll get false. Next, Pact allows you to express lists using brackets. In this example, we have three names, Alice, Dinesh, and Lee, that make up our list. Note that lists aren't separated by commas, as is common in some other languages. In Pact, you just leave a space between each item to form your list. Pact also has objects that closely resemble JavaScript objects. Objects are made of key value pairs as shown here. This object describes a pet of type cat named Scratchy who has an age of six years old. Pact also allows you to make a list of objects. This list includes a cat named Scratchy, age six, and it also describes a dog named Fluffy, age three. Both of these objects are included in the list. Time is another important and sometimes confusing data structure. Take a look at the following example. As you'll see, each property for time is preceded by a percent symbol, and each letter stands for a different value. This command is split into two sections, first where you're formatting the time, and next where you're defining a time using the format you created. So let's look at the time format. This time is defined as both the year, month, and day, along with hours, minutes, seconds, and the numeric time zone, as defined by each of these letters shown here. To help make the time more readable, we put dashes here, colons here, and separate the day from the minutes and seconds using a T. In the other half of the command, we're defining a time using the format we specified. As you can see, it's July 23, 2016, at 1330.45. So that's hopefully enough to get you started with each of the data formats. There's just a few more notes I wanted to make about the general syntax of Pact. When working with more complex examples in Pact, you'll quickly notice the heavy use of parentheses. This comes from Pact's Lisp-like syntax and is common in all Lisp-like languages. Here's an example Hello World module in Pact. Notice the use of parentheses to mark each statement, including modules, functions, and logic. There's no shortage of parentheses in Pact, and you'll quickly get used to using them to define each new statement. 
Another valuable tool is comments. Comments are used in PACT to clearly describe the purpose of the code. These are created using quotes. Here's the same Hello World smart contract with comments included in the module. After getting familiar with the PACT language syntax and basic data types, you're ready to start working with some of the PACT built-in functions. To access these functions, navigate to built-in functions using the navigation on the left. As you'll see, there are many functions available. These functions are broken into categories, including general, database, time, operators, key sets, capabilities, and REPL-only functions. Some of the simplest built-in functions are the arithmetic operations. In PACT, you can add, subtract, multiply, or divide by changing the operator. An important thing to note is that PACT uses prefix notation for math operators. This is another syntax common in Lisp-like languages like PACT. Prefix notation means that the operator precedes the two values it's performing the operation on. For example, running the following operation in your terminal will return 25. In this case, the statement is surrounded by parentheses, starts with the multiplication operator, then includes the values for the operation 5 and 5. Other math operations can be performed by changing multiply to add, subtract, or divide. You can also use this syntax to combine expressions. PAC's simple expression syntax makes it easy to build more complicated expressions by nesting parentheses. Can you tell how this expression is evaluated? In this case, PACT evaluates 2 minus 4 to get negative 2, then evaluates negative 2 plus 5 to get the final answer of 3. The syntax can take a bit of getting used to, but you'll hopefully be up and running with more complex operations pretty soon. Another group of helpful operators is the comparison operators. These check whether values are equal, not equal, greater than, less than, and includes other common comparisons. Let's run through a few examples using comparison operators now. First, does not equal. Here, the expression returns true because it's true that hello does not equal goodbye. Next, less than. Here, it's true that 1 is less than 3, so this will return true. You can specify less than or equal to like this. In this case, 5.24 is not less than or equal to 2.52, so this will return false. All of these operators can be used to check values between numbers, decimals, and lists. In this case, we're checking to see that these two lists are equal. 1, 2, and 3 is the value of both of these lists, so this will equal true. And to wrap it up with two other quick operators, 1 is not greater than 3, so this is false. And 1 is also not greater than or equal to 3, so this is also false. Try a few of these operators for yourself to get more familiar with the syntax. Along with arithmetic and comparisons, PAC supports Boolean, exponential, rounding, and many other common operators. You can learn more about each of these in the documentation. Moving on to some of the general built-in functions, you'll start to see some of the more unique cases of the PACT language. General functions are responsible for common tasks like manipulating lists, assigning values, checking values, and have many other use cases. The first function listed on this page is at. To run the at function, type the following command into your terminal and hit enter. As you can see, I get a result of two, which is the first index of this list. You can also search for other values by changing the index. Try updating this to look at index 2, and you should get back a 3. You can also use at to get the value from an object. By specifying the object key, you can return the value of that key from the object. In this case, you're looking in the object at name to see that the value is scratchy. Next, let's take a look at bind. Bind allows you to map a variable to a value from within an object. To create a binding, use the keyword bind followed by a source object. Follow this object with another object. This object should contain a specific value from within the source and bind it to a variable using the bind symbol. Finally, this last bit here returns the value of the variable. Let's run this example. This command returns the current value of a, which is 1. If I were to change a to another value, to say 15, then it'll update the value of the variable. 
Bindings are useful in smart contracts when you want to bind values from within a table to a specific variable name. This will come up in many cases and it's easiest to learn using the examples that I'll show throughout later tutorials. For now, what's important is that you understand that they exist and the syntax of how to create one. Another built-in function is map. Mapping allows you to apply a specific operation to all elements within a list and return the results. To create a mapping, use the keyword map followed by the operation and then the list. Here's an example. This command will add one to each value in the list and return a new list after running that operation on each element. In this case, one, two, three, plus one returns two, three, four. Also note that you can use any operator when working with mappings. You could add, subtract, multiply, or divide each of the items in a list if you'd like. You can also use this operation to map other values, including strings. For example, if you have a list of names, you can map hello to each of them, returning a friendly message for each item in the list. Here it says hello Kadena, hello Pact, and hello standard library. Another helpful built-in function is known as format. This function allows you to piece messages together using a mix of strings and variables. Formatting is great to use in many cases and is particularly useful when sending messages to users. Here's an example. When you run this, you'll see that what you get back is a string that inserts the variables provided in the postfix in the original string where the brackets are located. You can now place whatever values you'd like into the string. The first set of curly brackets corresponds to the first value in the list, the second corresponds to the second, and so on, for as many values as exist. While many built-in functions are provided for you with the PAC standard library, you'll often create your own functions. For this, you'll leave the REPL and begin writing code into the editor. This takes just a small amount of setup to get started. So before creating your functions, take a moment to define and read a key set, and then create a module. Writing your functions within the module will allow you to run the programs you create. The last thing you need to do to get started is create an admin key set. This will allow you to load the code into the REPL successfully. Now that everything is set up, let's get started writing functions. So here's the syntax used to create a function in PACT. Functions are defined using the keyword defun, followed by the name of the function, the parameters, and everything is enclosed within parentheses. Within the parentheses is all of the logic used to run the function. In this example, a function named return phrase will accept inputs A and B. Let's go ahead and fill out the logic for this function return phrase using the format function we saw earlier. To start, I'll paste in the format function. All I need to do now is replace the variables dog and fleas with the inputs of the function A and B. By creating a function, you can now take any two inputs and return a formatted string value. So, for the last step, call the function and include the parameters you'd like to pass in. In this case, I'll stick with dog and fleas to make sure it's set up how I want it. Select load into REPL to see the output. Great, my dog has fleas. You can now change these inputs to any values you'd like. I'll try cat and claws. Select load into REPL to see the new phrase. And that's basically it. There's a bit of structure around getting started, but given this framework, you can start building any function you'd like. Before wrapping up, try creating one more function using one of the math operators from earlier. For example, here's the command used to add two numbers. Using this, let's create a function that takes any two numbers as input, adds them together, and returns their sum. In this case, I'll rename the function add numbers and keep the parameters a and b. I'll then replace this line with plus a b. Finally, call the function add numbers and add any two values you'd like. Select load into REPL and you'll see the output is the sum of these two numbers. You can now use this to add any two numbers that you pass into this function. That wraps up this introduction to the packed language basics. Throughout this tutorial, I introduced the basics of the packed programming language. You went over the PACT standard library, syntax, commands, and built-in functions. You also wrote a few functions for yourself. If you're familiar with other programming languages, a lot of these ideas should be familiar. 
The goal here was to make sure you know where to find helpful resources and are prepared to start writing smart contracts for yourself. If you're new to programming, this tutorial hopefully helped you better understand some of the fundamental concepts of programming. You're now ready to try some new ideas for yourself. Take some time to explore the documentation and try a few more of the packed built-in functions. Smart contracts you create will depend on you being familiar with these basic ideas. You'll see plenty more examples of these concepts throughout the upcoming tutorials.